Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning, everybody. My name is Layla, and you're listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study, and we're glad you could join us. But before we get into the Word, let's take a minute to come before the Lord and pray and thank Him for the good things He's done for us. So, Lord, we humbly come before Your throne to ask that You send Your Holy Spirit to guide us through this devotional, Lord, and to reveal to us what it is that You have in store for us, God, the learning, the teaching, the encouraging, the admonishing, Lord. And I thank you for our partners and those that are listening, Lord, and those that are present in this room to take part in this devotional, Lord, for the spreading of your good news to all the creatures under heaven, God. And I thank you for your abundance of mercy, Lord, and your abounding grace and love towards us, Lord, and your forgiveness that you continually show us, God. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And welcome, everybody. As are we continue our study in Romans. We're in chapter 6, and with that, can I get a volunteer to read from verses 11 through 14, please? I will. All right, LaCharles. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but pre- but present yourself to God as being alive for the, from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Amen. So, as is our custom, we're going to open up the floor for each of you to share what the Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you. And of course, to ask any questions that you have. All right? Okay. Yes. Okay. So who would like to begin? I would. Well, please. Go ahead, Layla. All right. Verse 12 um, and 13 really caught my attention when Paul was um, telling the people in Romans not to yield their mortal bodies to lust and to sin and let their bodies be instruments of the enemy. And it Brought me to James chapter 4, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. <laughs> um, it was like the... So I'll just read verses 1 through 4 so you kind of get the context of what it's talking about. And it says, Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. And you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity or war with God? And you can read uh, yeah, the rest of that. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So it just kind of caught my attention when Paul had said this. Because we see that these Romans here, there aren't... Um, aren't many that teach the word there like in the in this time of the bible we see the roman empire starting to grow and take over and conquer more lands and there aren't very many prophets among them and you see them in the house of israel and paul here is making that uh jump between the river if you will crossing that bridge and bringing it to them as well to bring them to christ and he's going hey guys i know this is what you were taught when you were younger but don't do this don't let yourself be an instrument and a tool of the enemy just like the serpent in the garden allowed itself to be used by satan to tempt eve and then bring about all this destruction and calamity for the entirety of the human race until jesus came to redeem us and afterwards and so he's saying um this is the way to go it's almost like how Actually, no, it's exactly how you and mommy tell us all the time. Don't allow yourself to be used by the enemy. Don't allow you to become his instrument and his vessel, especially when it came to like um, 
I'll just use me as an example. Um, words. Sometimes I would get angry and use my words to hurt my siblings. And that was me yielding myself to the enemy and becoming a tool for him and to do his will instead of doing God's will. So my parents would always tell me, watch what you say. If you take a minute to reflect on what's about to fly out of your lips and you'd go, oh, that's not like the Lord. He doesn't say stuff like that. And so you don't say it. Instead, you choose to take those nasty words and put them at the feet of Jesus and um, fix your eyes back on him and get back into alignment to make sure that you're not uh, facilitating those kinds of behaviors and actions and making that an example and a pattern for those that are watching around you. Because we are a letter and a, an epistle read by all men. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I want to clarify something. Right? Okay. You brought up how, uh, not to take away from anything else you said. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you said there weren't many prophets in this time where Paul's writing this. In Rome, there weren't many like like Paul that would go and teach them and tell them this is... Um, this is not how you live. Most of them stayed within the house of Israel, almost like a Jonah didn't want to go mm. to Nineveh and those that weren't of the house of Israel. So there weren't very many prophets preaching throughout Rome itself. They were mainly in the house of Israel teaching their okay. own kind. Well, so, so this is what I want to clarify, right? Mm-hmm. Prophets, there is an office of a prophet, right? And there are, then there are also gifts of prophecy, right? Mm-hmm. Which are spoken. But we, as Christians or, or believers, whichever way you want to phrase it, we are all ambassadors or emissaries of Christ, mm-hmm. which means we are sent ones, wherever the Lord would send us, right? Now, what did Jesus say in this time as man, right, mm-hmm. in human form? He said, I am sent to the lost house to, the, to find the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm-hmm. That's where he was sent. Right? Yes. Paul started in the same manner as clearly the rest of the apostles, or many of the the other apostles, maintained throughout their, their ministry, right? Yes. Paul's was different. He was sent to the Gentiles. So it wasn't that there weren't prophets, right? Because Paul writes about that. There are prophetic gifts and... Mm-hmm. And offices, and he makes that very clear in a number of different passages, right? Ephesians 4 and Corinthians and, and others, right? Mm-hmm. However, it wasn't, I'll say, widely spread at that time, all right? But there, there's a difference. As it pertains to us, we are sent ones, wherever the Lord would send us. And you also see that with some of the other apostles, right? Like Philip, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? He heard from the Lord, and it was, go down this road, right? And it was desert. And he immediately got up and went because that's where the Lord was sending him. But that goes back to our love for our Father. And as a result of that love, we are obedient to what he is commanding us to do. Right? Yes. And we you also know it by the fruit. And what was the fruit of those things? Paul started many churches. It was used by the Lord to start many churches to establish and assert rule and reign and authority in the places where he was sent. People followed Christ. Same with Philip going down there, right? We had the Ethiopian eunuch, and he was baptized. Yes. So he received the Lord and was baptized, which says a lot, right? So you see the fruit when it's actually the Lord sending people, right? Yes. So, so I just want to I want to bring that out, but then you brought up some very interesting things, and and. I want to cover that, but I think we're going to pause because I think someone else has something to say. Bob, are you going? I'm trying to find something real quick. Oh, you can go, I promise. I see you over there, sir. Okay, so for, first the Lord brought me to verse 11 where it says, Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead and need to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. It then he may be continued to verse 12 where it says, Therefore, do not let sin reign your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. So the Lord, Lord was talking to me about how when, how when he gave an example. When a person's dead, you can't do so, you can't do something with your physical body. So that's how it should be with sin. You're 
can't even do sin. It's that, let me say, repugnant. It's, in a way, you're not even tempted by it, right? You remember last, yes. well, a few episodes ago, right? Um, yes. We were talking about temptation. And someone can appear to tempt someone, right? You can put it in front of someone, but if they have no desire for the object, while there was, quote unquote, a temptation, were they even really truly tempted because they had no desire for it? And you could argue that either way, right? There was a temptation, but the person's will or their desire overrode, if you will, they had... It wasn't that there wasn't a, a temptation presented, right? But it had no effect. So there was no action or thought really given towards it besides identifying it and then moving forward in truth or in this case, as it applies, right? In Christ and in the Lord's will for us and for our lives. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay. So continue, sir. And... How, where Paul says, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it and lust. Where it's, he said, don't let it come, become to a point where you can't even stop yourself from saying that it's unconscious, if you will. Well, not unconscious, sorry. But like that second nature? Yes, that's a happy, you're not even thinking about it, but you find yourself doing it. Hmm. Okay. And also how you shouldn't let get to a point where you have to hold a knife to your belly and go, no, I'm not going to go do this, but you should be able to go. Mm, that's not even a temptation. Well, but therein lies the, the question. How do we get to that point or that place where... As promise phrased it, right? We don't have to put a knife to our, our flesh or our belly, right? And to not carry out an act, right? How do you get to that place? You train yourself. Oh, okay. Yes. Now, Paul talks about that in other books, right? Mm -hmm. He says, I buffet my flesh daily. In other words, he says, I bring it into submission. Right? Because he... And we were talking about this before this episode about um, the flesh wants to do what the flesh wants to do. All right? Yes. Yes. And then we can also look at it in verse 14. Sin shall not have dominion over you. All right? Correct. Yes. yes. But let's, let's go back. We can go back to the beginning, Genesis 4. Does that not sound very similar to what the Lord spoke to Cain? Yes. Mm -hmm. It said, sin lies at the door, and its desire is to have you, but you should rule over it. So how do we get to that point? Well, we have to buffet our flesh, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And we've brought this up before, but, you know, it's a safeguard, so it bears repeating, <laughs> all right? Yes. Isaiah 58 and Isaiah 61. Isaiah 58 from verse 6 to the end of the chapter is talks about fasting. Is this not the fast that I would choose? Is this exactly? Is this not the fast that I would choose? And he talks about what happens during that fast. But if you really look at that, again, and especially in light of Isaiah 61, the they're identical. They are literally talking about the exact same things. So then it's easy to note that it's not just about a fast or and how we traditionally think of fasts, as in, well, I'll deprive myself of some food or electronics or, or whatever it is in today's day and age, right? Yes. In, in order to, I'll say, clear out the things in our lives that make it difficult for us to hear the Lord speaking to us. Right, But it is about living a fasted life where every area of our lives is brought into submission. There's nothing, no area in our lives that's preventing us from clearly 
and accurately hearing the word of the Lord for us. Right? It matters. And then when we see those things, when we buffet our flesh to that point, we see the fruit of that, right? And you see it throughout the rest of Isaiah 58. Um, again, from verses 6 to the end of the chapter, and Isaiah 61. It's describing exactly what happens when we continue to move and operate in that manner. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And also we can look at even church history. If you read or study about any period of revival in the church, what was the first thing they all had in common? Sin had to go. Right? Yes. It had to be dealt with. It had to be brought under the blood and forgiven. We had to repent for it so we could bring it under under the atoning work of the Lord through the blood that he shed. To make us white as snow and to throw that sin into the sea of forgetfulness. It matters. But then let's also remember that this is the identifying with Christ chapter. So this brings up the the third and fourth thing, this this section of scripture, of identifying with Christ. And the first is reckoning ourselves, right? That's verse 11. Reckoning yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the fourth thing is this. Refusing the reign of sin or refusing to allow sin to reign or have control to rule over us in our body, right? And this is mentioned in multiple places in Scripture. Uh, I'll just give you a couple. Um, Actually, let's start with Colossians. If you could go to Colossians chapter 3. And could I get a volunteer to read verses 5 through 17, please? I will. All right, I promise. Therefore, put to death your members which are on earth, fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, com- cov- and com- covetousness. And co- covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of, wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you w- lived within them. But now, you yourself start to put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, circumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving, and forgiving one another. If anyone has has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must also do. Through seventeen, please, sir. Oh, seventeen. Sorry. But above all these, above all these things, put on love, which is the peace of God. Wait. Bond of perfection. Sorry, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, and. In spiritual songs, speaking with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in which in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus and the in the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God to God the Father through him. Mm, amen. So do you see some of the points that are made there? in identifying with Christ, the things we're to put off. And there's a considerable list there, right? Yes. Yes. But notice how one is not listed over another. They're all viewed equally, as in they're all things that separate us from Christ. 
they're to be put off, right? Yes. Yes. And, or put to death or put off from us, not found within our our lives, right? But then it tells us to put on the new man, which, well, there's, you'll find that in Ephesians 4, right? And we'll go to that, that section of scripture here in a second. But as a result of putting on the new man, and, a, and in so doing, identifying with Christ, right? It tells you a number of different things, right? You're the elect of God, you're holy, you're beloved, and then tells you to put on well, you know, a whole lot of things that sound exactly like the fruits of the Spirit. Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, right? The same things mm-hmm. the Lord describes even in his Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes. This is the same message. We're hearing it over and over for every generation because it matters. And guess what? It all looks like Christ, right? Right? which is uh, in Colossians 3, verse 14, right? Mm-hmm. Above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Sounds an awful lot like Christ, right? Yes. And it yes. says very plainly in Scripture, God is love. And then, of course, we're exhorted in verse 17. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father, through him, right? But let's let's turn to Ephesians four real quick. And can I get a, a volunteer to read from verses seventeen through twenty four, please? Seventeen through twenty? Twenty four. Twenty four. I'll read that. Alright, Charles. This they say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in their fu- futility of their mind. Having their understanding darkened, being now alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feelings, have given themselves over to lewdness, to all uncleanliness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that put on, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Mm. So this says a, a number of different things, right? This yes. Is, first, it gives us a, a very, I'll say condensed list, right? Mm-hmm that we just read in Colossians, right? In Colossians, it was yes. um, definitely expounded upon. <laughs> it was, I won't say it was full and complete, right, if you will, but there was a lot more detail given, right? This is yes. more of an overview. But it also says the why, right? It, it takes away excuses. The, um, ignorance and all those things, right? Ignorance and blindness of heart, choosing not to believe what is right there in in our face, right? And why yes. is that the case? Because we want the thing that we see, right? Yes. yes. The Apostle John in 1 John breaks it down into three categories, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. All sin is broken down into one of those three categories, right? But we're also told how we can overcome these things. That's the last two verses, 23 and 4. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind, is one. And two, put on the new man, and here's the thing, created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Which goes back to, as we bring it back to Romans 6, right? And identifying with Christ. Our salvation only comes in and through Jesus. There's nothing, it goes right back to what Paul has been exhorting both Jews and Greeks or Jews and Gentiles from the beginning. We're only righteous, we're only holy through him. Nothing that we could do, no law that we could follow or, right, except to love God with all our mind, heart, body, soul, and strength and love our neighbor as ourself, right? 
Yes. Again, yes. notice how God is first. In him we have everything, our being. Right? Yes. 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 Nothing that we can do of ourselves. Actually, scripture tells us very plainly, without me you can do nothing. So we can't save ourselves. There's no amount of works that we could do. It is only receiving no, I'll say through faith, receiving the grace that he has given us through his work on the cross, which he first gave us as a result of his love for us. Does that make sense? Yes. Everybody tracking? Yes. So, so yes, we have to deal with these things, with sin in our lives. It separates us from God. Right? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. But then also, as you pointed out, Layla, we, our lives, are an epistle read by all men. People see, and they discuss it, just like any book, anything of interest, right? Yes. They're going to discuss it, and they're going to, even in the natural, discuss where it lines up and where it doesn't. Where it looks like Christ and where it doesn't look like Christ. Well, yeah, I, 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 I almost always have something to say, John. Oh. Um, well, please do, brother. I, I think um, I, I want to add some context for this. It it would seem to me it would be very easy for the enemy to be speaking to somebody listening right now, saying, "You can't do this." You're not capable. You've been struggling with this for a long time. You're never going to win. You're never going to get over it. Whatever it may be that's allowing sin to rule over you. And you may have, um, from your perspective, experienced defeat in the areas that you wish to improve. The context, I think, that's important for that is, um, one, that's, uh, be very clear, that is not what we're saying that um, you're weak or pull yourself up by your bootstraps and why can't you do it uh you shouldn't hear any of that if you are um please remove that from your thoughts amen but more importantly there's a couple of key things that people need to understand that may not understand um okay. number one you're incapable of properly judging yourself it's impossible for you to do you were never meant to be able to do that um I've had many experiences in my life, and I'm not going to try to get off into a side story, um, but where people have shared with me something about um, maybe a little idiosyncrasy of mine or maybe a tick when I'm speaking to a group or something like that that I was completely unaware of and would have probably argued with you that what you were saying was not true. Yet, seeing in video would go, wow, I do do that. I did not know I did that. So, so we all have things to say, I did not know I did that. And so we're incapable of seeing ourselves properly and in the right context. Take that into the next thing that has to be done in context. So although as we're looking at the Bible through segments of individual, what we call chapters, uh, each of these books were written as whole messages. They weren't segmented out. And we can't segment out the Bible. The Bible has to be taken as a whole at the same time mm-hmm. while we're looking at any individual section of Scripture. The big part of that that I think is important is, is that we are part of a whole. And we are not the head. We are all part of the body. We may be Amen. in individual groups, but we are all part of the one body the body of Christ. Amen. The body cannot function by itself as one part. You need to be part of the body. So um, could really get sidetracked here and spend a lot of time in this. I'm trying not to do that. So if, one, I want to be clear. This, this Bible study is not meant to substitute you getting together in regular communion and fellowship with other believers um, I firmly believe that that means in proximity. I realize if you're experiencing some health challenge and maybe you're more susceptible to something, and that's the message we're getting nowadays in the media, where you want to do a Zoom meeting or something, but it should be for a short time and season. You need to be in the physical presence of other believers 
You need to be connected to the body and let them speak into your life and let them walk alongside you as you learn to overcome sin in your life. But you're not supposed to do it by yourself. You're supposed to do it within the body and you're not supposed to judge yourself. You're not just not supposed to. And we can look at ourselves rightly, Absolutely. right? We can look at ourselves rightly in the mirror and we can listen to what the Holy Spirit is illuminating to us. But we need to make sure it's the Holy Spirit. It's illuminating these things. Because the Holy Spirit may come to us firmly, may come to us strongly, may come to us with things that we don't want to hear, but it's never going to have the flavor of condemnation. It's never going to have the flavor of anxiety. It's never going to have the flavor of unworthiness. It's never going to have any of that. And if that's what you're hearing, if that's what you're experiencing, that is not the Spirit of God speaking to you. It is the voice of the enemy, and he's trying to confuse you. So I just... Mm -hmm. I just really concerned that people could hear this and because of the struggles they have, not because anything anybody's saying here could take this and look at this and something that I'll never be able to overcome. I'll never be that person. Nobody's ever suggesting that you are suggesting you be connected to the body and the body together can overcome anything. Mm -hmm. And, but again, how do we do that? And we do that through Christ, right? We brought up a couple of different things. Um, and I'll give you the, the scripture or, as another brother in Christ would say, what's the address on that? <laughs> and that's in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. All right? And we brought up a couple things from here. One, we'll start in verse 14. I'll give me a minute to get there. Just give me an amen when you have arrived. Amen. All right. says now thanks be to god who always leads us in triumph in christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place so no we can't do it in and of ourselves but in christ we can do all things right yes. he says where it makes that very very plain and we brought this up earlier. Without me, you can do nothing. But all things, he also says, but all things are possible to them who believe. Who believe what? In Christ. In his power and authority that he's been given from the Father. Right? And he says, all power and all authority has been given to me. Everything the Father has is mine. Yes? Yes. yes. Okay. And he said that to his disciples. Right, but then also you, you Layla, I believe brought this up, and we discussed it a little bit, where he says, uh, and this is in First uh, Corinthians chapter three, Second Corinthians, excuse me, chapter three, verses two and three. You are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart. Right? Mm -hmm. His word is in us. It's not way up on the mountain that we should say, who, should, who will ascend and get it? It's not across the sea that we say, who will go over and get it? It is written in us, on the tablets of our heart. Right? Yes. But he's also working in us. And we saw, or we read about his, the Jesus's work, right, in yes. his ministry, and those that had afflictions or diseases or whatever the case was, he healed them, he delivered them. But then also we brought up Isaiah fifty-eight and sixty-one, and he says we will do the same things, right? That it's written in there. Yes, it is what the what Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, used to define his earthly ministry. But also, he said, greater things than these you will do. He's given us power and authority as well, right? Which is what, in, again, we brought up this all the way back to Genesis. Whether it pertains to sin or anything else in our lives. He says, we should rule over it. Well, he says it to Cain first. You should rule over it. It doesn't matter if it's desirous to have you. Rule over it. 
in your life. How do we do that? We bring it before our Lord and Savior. And it also says that the Holy Spirit will, even if when we're tempted, He will give us a way of escape. But how do we hear that? How do we know what the way of escape is? Well, we put ourselves in a place by buffeting our flesh that we can clearly hear Him. Clearly and accurately hear what He's saying and how He's leading us in our lives. All right? Yes. yes. And, and Dina, I love that you brought it. Yes, get connected with a body of believers. Absolutely. Um, no, this, this is not meant to be a substitute. This ministry, if you will, and this podcast is not meant, particularly the podcast, is not meant to be a substitute. It is supposed to augment. And that's what the Lord has led us to do, is, is to augment what you are receiving and to ensure that you, listeners, believers, Christians, have an additional resource or way that you can be spiritually fed because it doesn't, the responsibility of, of growing in Christ, as much as has happened for, for a long time, many have put that um, burden, if you will, on various pastors and whatnot. It's not on the pastor for your relationship. You know, I can't have a relationship with Christ through another pastor or another person. It's me individually. So if I want to grow in Christ then I have an inherent responsibility to spend time in his word, to let him teach me and feed me and instruct me in his thoughts, in his ways, in the way I should go. And it's the same for everyone. So, and and I say that because just so everyone understands, when the Lord had us found this ministry, had us begin this, it was to augment and to help build others up. Absolutely, get connected with with bodies of believers, and and you're welcome to connect with us. Yes, we can connect and, and develop relationships through through email and online and through this podcast. And you're able to come visit us. Just reach out. We'd love to have you. We'd love to get together with you and and, and develop the bonds and relationships and and each or and help each on another, each other grow in the things of the Lord together. So. Just make sure everybody knows. We, we get together every Sunday and fellowship together. You're welcome to join us with that here in Chesapeake, Virginia. And once a month, which is the third Saturday, we also get together and fellowship and take communion. And so that's an open mm-hmm. invitation to anybody that's in the area, in the Chesapeake, Virginia area, to join us at any time with that. Just reach out to the ministry at a day of prayer at yahoo.com. We'd love to hear from you. Love to talk to you. And John, just so uh, people aren't confused, you might want to address the fact that we're missing a couple of voices and maybe missing a couple of voices in the room for the next uh, few podcasts. We are. And, uh, you know, we all have have our responsibilities before the Lord, right? And we have to go and do what the Lord has called us to do. So for the next few um, podcasts, yes, um, Kamisha won't, is not with us, and, and neither is Kyla. They have... Um, to go minister and do the things that the Lord has called them to do. So, so they're not, not here for a few. Um, however, the word of the Lord is still going forth, and it's still going to accomplish all that he has planned and purposed. You know, And that's the beautiful thing about the Lord. He's not held up by us, but he uses us to go out and minister and do his will so that others can be ministered to and have their needs met. Amen? Amen. All right, well, let's pause there for today because that's a lot. And um, can I get a volunteer to close us out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we just thank you for today and for your word, Lord, and being near us, Lord, and walking with us hand in hand, Lord, guiding us in our every step, God, and just teaching us about you, Lord, and developing our character in you, God, our, our, and making us into your image, Lord. And I thank you for all that you are doing lord all that you have done and all the things that you will do lord and for giving us the pleasure to participate in your plan god to be those vessels of honor created for your purpose lord designed to carry out what it is that you have to do lord 
And so we thank you for our listeners and the blessings that you're pouring out on them, Lord, and those that are supporting this ministry, God. And we ask that you continue to keep them, Lord, continue to guide them and bless them, Lord, and cause them to prosper and their enemies to be at peace with them, Lord. And we ask that you continue to guide their steps, God, just as you guide ours. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.